All right, so today we're gonna be talking about Kiana, aka Kiki, aka Donut Lady. So, uh, first, what colors do you want to start with? I, you know, I, I don't actually know what she looks like. Not really. I, I we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna improvise a little bit. But first question you might be wondering is, okay, I'm probably not rolling Kiana. Why should I give a shit about Kiana? Right? She's a two cost. She's not a big four cost. She's not a fancy little five cost. Why should I care about Kiana? And that I will say. That's even more reason to care about Kiana. The fact that you don't reroll her, but she's a unit that you can have on a board in your mid game, and that if you can play around her properly, you're gonna get a big advantage, right? If you know, if you um, if you're the only person in the world, this isn't gonna be true, but if you're the only person in the world that knows how to effectively play Kiana, and then no one's buying Kiana's on stage two, and you're the one buying Kiana's on stage two, and you're playing around her effectively because you know what she needs to succeed or which what you know how to play around her. You're gonna get a lot of mileage out of that and that's the kind of the goal of this whole series uh is to like you know help you get more mileage out of your units but that is to say it's important let's talk about her um let's also draw her again because i decided i'm just gonna do drawing still um uh this color seems close sure okay so uh we'll start with the legs i guess i he's got big legs um Oh, I don't know about that one, but anyways, so, you know, what makes every unit tick is actually a little bit different unit to unit. It's not, so for example, in the Zyra video, we talked a lot about how you could reroll Zyra. We talked a lot about how you can, um, how, yeah, how you can itemize her for your mid game to make her do things pretty easily because Story Reaver was a good synergy and Sage was a nice flex synergy and there's a lot of good units to play around them. So... Kiana is a pretty different type of unit, and so when I say that, what I mean is that uh, Kiana very much is a unit that is feast or famine. That that like she either is going to be doing like thirty thousand damage in a fight. Uh, let's erase that. She's going to be doing like thirty thousand damage in a fight, or she's going to be doing like ten trillion negative damage. I said that wrong. I, she's going to be doing. Like, no damage in a fight, basically, right? She's going to do a ton of damage, she's going to be no damage. And what, what dictates whether or not she does damage is actually very different than what a unit like Zyra uh, is dictated by. So, how Kiana does damage... Actually, you know, we're going to keep that. We're just going to do this. Ready? I'm going to make her a donut because I don't know what she looks like. We're also going to start making these a little bit shorter, by the way. So, um, so that is to say that what makes Kiana succeed is very much very very much uh her ability to be positioned well in a fight and her ability to get a big lineup for her spell talk about her spell in a second um and then also that like kind of the unit quality around her and how you've built your board around her which she's a pretty i would say unintuitive unit to play around because a lot of units in tft you're like okay i'm gonna play some of their synergies i'm just gonna stick them on the board and then for the most part right obviously you can position better or worse but for the most part they're gonna just do a similar thing every fight but the thing with kiana that makes her different is that uh, she's a very, very positioning dependent unit, and she's a very, very reliant on the other units on her board. And so what I mean by that is that, so if you read how, how Kiana's spell works, I don't know if it's actually that obvious when you read it, but basically how it works is that she first dashes to a spot where she can hit as many things as possible. Also, she's heavenly duelist for anyone who didn't know. You probably know that if you're watching a video with Kiana. Um, but uh, so she dashes to a spot where she hits like the most units possible. Uh, with her spell, which is that every single auto attack does more bonus damage to the unit that she's her primary target, and then also does damage in like a a line up to three up to two hexes away. So like it's her target, she can hit one thing away from that, and then one more thing away from that. So she can hit up to three things at once, technically, right? And so the reason why positioning is so do or die for Kiana is that she is a very 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 fragile unit, like a super duper fragile unit, right? She has pretty low base resistances. She's a melee unit, so she's up in the, in, you know, the, the shit. And if you're not six duelist, she has, like, basically no defensive trait at all, which is, you know, fine. You can, you can technically say Heavenly is, like, you're playing Melphite and Nico maybe, which give HP and armor and MR, but for the most part, she's, like, she gets targeted by, like, an Ash or, like, let's say even earlier game unit, right? Like a Senna, she's probably gonna die. Unless, when you itemize her right, uh, you position your board correctly, and you understand how she functions as a unit. So how do you make Kiona pop off? Uh, well, first and foremost, actually, we can draw this over here rather than having to uh, go away. So if these are your, if, if your Kiana is right here, right? Let's say your Kiana is right here. 
Actually, let's not do that because that's actually going to be a little confusing. Let's let's just I'm gonna I'm just gonna put uh, I'm just gonna put stuff from like Cactus Dot Tools on here, like from the Team Planner. Position Kiana like this, insert thing here, or like this potentially to make sure that she gets a big a big AOE. But the biggest thing is that you're putting you have to make sure that you're putting the right unit in front of Kiana. So it generally is going to be like if you're playing early you know early heavenly, it's going to be uh, maybe your your big Melfite too, right? It's going to be maybe your your Shen too, your your uh, you, whatever big behemoth guy you might be playing. Maybe you're playing around Nico plus like a Lowy, right? You put, make sure your Lowy's in the front, like right in front of her, because if that unit dies, if that like top cornered unit in front of her dies, one, she's just going to pop. Uh, if it died, they die too quickly, and two. She is just going to not get the lineup properly if she dies, if they die too quickly. So you have to be like really cognizant of what unit it, you're putting in front of her. And, you know, when I say positioning is really important with Kiana, and this is something that you'll see a lot with units the more we talk about them, is that a lot of her success does not actually rely on her. It relies on how you play, like, like, like what units you play around her and more so like what items they have, right? So like, for example, often if you have like, I, let's say you have IE Last Whisper Kiana, the best way to make your board stronger is not going like Hodge on your Kiana, generally speaking. It's going to be going a tank item on whatever unit's right in front of her so that she has more time to do her damage. Um, she's very, very high DPS in the right situation, but you know, if she's dead, then she's going to be lacking DPS in a, in a pretty big way. Um, yeah, so that, that is to say that positioning, super duper important. You have to be very, very aware of how exactly uh, you're... you're Putting your front line to not get bowed too quickly um and then i think item wise kiana is actually like a little bit less uh intuitive than she looks in that she seems like she just won a lot of big damage right like your last whisper ie hodge or something like that but what i've found works best for kiana based on you know she has so much spell spell damage so much damage in her kit already what you really need is you just need like like two healing items and like a titans or something right you want to you want to make sure that you're getting a lot of healing that you're keeping her alive so when she does start getting hit once that unit does die she still gets to keep pumping because the thing is she will get hit eventually right that unit will die no matter what but if you can kind of leverage the fact that she has so much base damage everywhere i think this is good by the way i should probably i know she wears like heals often so i'm gonna make the you ready heal and like the straps on her toes um Basically, if you can leverage the fact that she does so much damage with the right positioning, and if she's just let allowed to stay alive, to just go like Hodge BT, like like you know Titans or something like that, she can do so 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 much damage. Um, and, and you know it's she's not relying on items in the same way that like Zyra's relying on items, where she doesn't do damage without the items that let her that, like boost her damage a ton. She just needs items that let her survive because if she survives, she's doing a lot of damage. And she can pump by the way. She is like probably the highest DPS cost in the game uh given the right situation you know i think she's often overshadowed by units like darius in your mid game by units like uh i guess darius is the big one right because like everyone's like oh man darius choose it we'll talk about darius next time we'll there was like darius is a beast you know uh what am i what am i able to do against this giga chad one cost who just pulls on my whole board and to that i will say if you don't have darius and you're playing a heavenly opener trying to get the cane or something then you can very, very reasonably just play around Kiana with, you know, cane items. You can go like GA, BT, Last Whisper, those are pretty, you know, generic cane Lee Sin items in the current meta, and, and still find a lot of success. That's basically to say that if you can make her survive, she will do really great things for you, so make her survive. Make that the priority itemization-wise. Um, don't worry about, like, best-in-slot stuff, right? It, it doesn't matter that much as long as you're focusing on that core idea of my Kiana survives, she does damage. You also need like a little bit of damage, right? With like the ha the Titans or like the, the Hodge getting a little more damage. But for the most part, you just want like stuff that keeps her alive. Okay, cool. Um, and so then you might also be saying like, again, why do I care about Kiana? She's not a four cost. Darius exists too. Um, again, you don't always have the Darius. Sometimes you have to itemize the Kiana because you get Kiana too early and you want to, you know, play a strong board around that. Uh, you, you pretty much never reroll Kiana, I will say. I think, I don't know how to draw her head. Okay. Um, the thing about Kiana reroll is that by the time the game gets to four costs and to five costs, there's so much damage going out so quickly. I think she has silver hair. There's so much damage going out so quickly that she 
basically can't survive the onslaught ever, right? Maybe if you have like some crazy setup, we have like a bunch of support items and really insane Keon items. Maybe she can survive like the Ash Bombard or like the, the you know, Kaisa hitting her really hard, maybe. But more than likely, that's not gonna work out super well. Uh, and so she's much more of like a mid game thing. But again, if you can leverage her in your mid game, you will have way more successful games. And it's okay to like, you know, people often, if they're they're playing Kane, they're like, I don't want to itemize my Kiana because I'll have to sell it later and find it again. That's okay. Focus more on what your board's doing right now. And Kiana's basically the, the poster girl for that in this set, where if you itemize her, if you don't care about the fact that, rather, if you're aware of the fact that you're going to have to replace her later and you're okay with that, then you can get so much mileage out of Kiana. Honestly, Kiana probably does more damage than Darius on, on stage two and three. Probably like, like a lot more, actually. Because um, she just does so much damage as long as you set up her up properly. Uh, so that is to say, yeah, she's a unit that is really, uh, her success, I'm going to draw some, she throws things, so she's going to hold one big donut. Uh, oh, I probably should have made that a different, I'm going to make that a different color. Um, she holds things that, you know, like, like want to go on these big four cost melee units really, really well. And obviously, again, she wants to be on those boards, but that's okay. And then if you play her really well, you make a board that uses her really well. The nice thing is that, like, Cade and Lee also don't mind having that kind of setup. Like, they don't love it, right? They'd rather have, like, mostly just items on, like, the other carry as well. But if you play Kane 2 with, like, tank items on an Orn with Heavenly in, instead of, like, playing that Lee secondary carry, you're also going to have a lot of success going into Stage 4 and, like, through Stage 4. So, yeah. You guys said, Kiana's one of those units that to find a lot of success with her, you have to think about the game a little bit more holistically, a little bit more about, like, you know, what what's going on, what, what, what's, what the big picture is, how does your board actually play a fight? And if you do, again, you get rewarded very heavily. Uh, if you were to reroll her, I think technically, right, in the outside of this current meta, she's maybe a carry you can play in like six duelist. Um, again, as long as you keep that that core idea of, I need something big in front of my Kiana, I need to be very focused on positioning my Kiana to maximize her DPS, then you can do really, really cool things with her. She also has a really easy time wrapping as a result of how she does damage, because if she kills her target, then also, you know, immediately kills the thing next to her target because of the AoE damage, then she just gets to walk to back line and she can wrap really excellently like that. So yeah, Yana's cool. Uh, you know, she's more than just a synergy bot. Don't think of any unit in the game as just a synergy bot, because they all can be played around in some way. And we'll talk about those units in the future as well. So if you like Kiana, I think this is good. If you like Kiana uh, and you, I appreciated learning more about Kiana. Make sure to, you know, like the video and subscribe. We're gonna do more of these every day. And uh, yeah, bye-bye. Thanks for watching.